How's it going, people? Doing good? Had some things I had to fix around here. Um, haven't done a lot of videos in a while. Just haven't been feeling it. And, you know, not that my videos are any good, but um, they're probably even worse when I'm not feeling it. So. Ugh. A lot of stress lately and it's getting better so I'm gonna have me a little uh, bud ice and I thought I would return to the DNC because it's got to be getting good by now I mean we're getting towards the uh, end of Joey's life All right, let's see. I was in section. Ooh, it's a long one. Uh oh. <laughs> section 121. Wow, it's a long one. I should have peeked ahead. Now I'm not sure I want to do it. Okay, I'm up to it now. Section 121, Prayer and Prophecies Written by Joseph Smith the Prophet While a Prisoner in the Jail at Liberty, Missouri. That's ironic. Liberty Jail. Uh, dated March 20th, 1839. The Prophet, with several companions, had been months in prison. Their petitions and appeals directed to the executive officers and the judiciary had failed to bring them relief. See History of the Church, Volume 3, page 289, if you can find a copy of it. If you have an extra one, I'd sure like it. Fervent appeals to the Lord on in behalf of the suffering saints. The curse of the Lord to fall upon those who contend against his will. Men, though called, may not be chosen. Something to keep in mind. Uh, the rights of the priesthood inseparably connected with the powers of heaven. Unrighteous exercise of the power of the priesthood leads to apostasy. Yeah, and it dis disillusions folks and turns them into, well, something other than a Mormon. Hopefully an atheist, but probably just some other kind of silly shit. Because once you've conditioned somebody to believe in silly shit, you know, they can swallow in just about anything. If the reason is reasoning is fuzzy enough. All right. Um, powers of the priesthood to be executed in justice and mercy. And that's it for the preface. Now let's start the section, which is a big one. One. Oh God, where art thou? And where is the pavilion that covereth thy hiding place? And where is your fucking faith? To be asking questions like that, Mr. Prophet. Although it does sound a little bit like maybe Psalms. Of course, they wrote that during the Babylonian exile, really most of it and it wasn't King David who wrote it and it wasn't Joseph Smith either I'm pretty sure because um, yeah there's a notation um, I can't read that all right um, don't have my glasses I can read this can't read the really fine print two how long shall thy hand be stayed and thine ear yea Wait, and thine eye, yea, th 
Thy pure eye behold from the eternal heavens the ro behold from the eternal heavens the wrongs of thy people and of thy servants and thine ear be penetrated with their cries because right now that's all we're hearing is their wailing not hearing anything from the big guy in the sky <sighs> ah, I'm just making videos it's been a month I think since my last one ah, been busy just wasn't fair at all of you for me to be not completely with it okay three Yea, O Lord, how long shall thy how long shall they suffer these wrongs and unlawful oppressions before thine heart shall be softened towards them and and thy bowels be moved with compassion towards them? Right now he's I guess he's shitting on them, but just not compassionately. I mean, he's testing them. Oh, that's right. He only gets the credit, never the blame. I forgot. Probably was the devil then. Um. <laughs> Thy bowels be moved with compassion. Compassionate bowel movement, huh? Ah, poetry. Ugh. O Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven, earth, and seas, and of all things that in them are, and who controllest and subjecteth, subjectest the devil. He controls and subjects the devil. The devil's his puppet? Is that what you're saying, Joey? And the dark and the benighted, the dumbass uh, dominion of Sheol. Stretch forth thy thy hand, and let thy thine eye pierce. Let thy pavilion be taken up. Let thy hiding place no longer be covered. Let thine ear be inclined. Let thine heart be softened and thy thy bowels moved with compassion towards the towards us. That's not something I would request. Nothing to do with bowel movement. Uh -uh. Not on. <laughs> you don't want to be under that. I don't. Five. Let thine anger be kindled against our enemies, and in the fury of thine heart, with thy sword, avenge us our wrongs. Because he's not up to even flintlocks right now, you know. I mean, swords. I think it's probably made out of iron by now. <laughs> God's got a sword. Yeah. Thor's got a hammer. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, with thy sword, avenge us our wrongs. Six, remember thy suffering saints, O our God. And thy servants will rejoice in thy name forever. <coughs> there it is. Mm. Ah. Seven. My son, peace be unto thy soul. Thine adversity and thine affliction shall be but a small moment. So that's God answering him? Holy Ghost, maybe? Maybe it's Casper. Um, a friendly ghost, at least. Uh, eight. And then 
if thou endurest well, if thou endure it well, God shall exalt thee on high, thou shalt triumph over all thy foes. Got it in writing there. Got, it's bound, bound to have happened, right? Uh, we'll just have to keep reading. Um, Mm. King of Beers. Uh, I like to switch up um, with my beverages. Nine. Thy friends do stand by thee, and they shall hail thee again with warm hearts and friendly hands. Because those are the best kind. You know, when things are going your way, all hearts should be warm and all hands friendly. Especially when they're directed at you. I, I, I just like the sound of that, that's all. A little bit spread that around the whole world. Yeah. We'll just try wishing real hard for it and it'll happen. All right, back to the... Back to this whining. God damn, whining. Now he's talking to himself. <sighs> 10. Thou art not yet as Job. You don't have it that bad yet. No boils, you know, no oozing wounds. Or Lazarus the, from the Luke, you know, where he's getting his sores licked by dogs. Although that's probably really good for him. Uh, the sores, not the dogs. Um, yeah, thou art not yet as Job, thy friends do not contend against thee, neither charge thee with transgression as they did Job. Not yet, right? Not yet at this point. <sighs> Eleven. And they who do charge thee with transgression, uh, there... Hope shall be blasted with God's sword. His bronze sword, or whatever it is. It's a bastard sword. That's what it is. Uh, blasted. And their prospects shall melt away as the hoarfrost melteth before the burning rays of the rising sun. That almost needed, you know, sound effects. You know, that was so pretty. You know, like birds tweeting stuff. That was, wow. He probably lifted that somewhere. Twelve. And also that God hath set his hand and seal to change the times and seasons and to blind the minds that they may not understand his marvelous workings. It worked. I don't understand. It seems like there's nobody at the switch, actually. <laughs> so, it's a dead man switch for an invisible friend. <sighs> that he may prove them also and take them in their own craftiness. Ah, oh, see, it all makes sense. God's pretending not to exist. And you look at Michael. Ah! <laughs> Get over here, all you atheists. You're, guess what number you are? <laughs> oh, craftiness. Um, also, because their hearts are corrupted, they must be, and the things which they are willing to bring upon others and love to have others suffer, may come upon themselves to the very uttermost. 14. That they may be disappointed also, and their hopes may be cut off. Oh, this sounds like a little kid pouting in his jail cell, writing down all this.
<sighs> 15. And not many years hence that they and their prosperity uh, they and their posterity shall be swept from under heaven. He's pissed at their whole family, even future generations, it sounds like. <sighs> so fucking enlightened. Uh, saith God that not one of them is left to stand by the wall. And I'm going to stop at 15 because I want to break this up. Uh, and take a piss. Uh, stand by the wall. That sounds like Jeremiah. I wonder if that is E, E, E. Uh, I don't see any passages. They have these notes, but they're sending me to another chap another section, another verse in this book. Great. Pisseth against the wall. I seem to remember is how that was phrased in uh, the King James Version. I think it was like in Jeremiah or one of those guys. I think it was Jeremiah, maybe Isaiah. Talking about, yeah, we're going to kill all everybody that pisseth against the wall, which is basically kill all the guys. But that's, you know, yeah. It's a paraphrased version of, I think it's Jeremiah. Not an expert here. I've read the Bible, but I don't have it like, you know, encyclopedic memory of it. Not now, anyway. Anyway, I'm going to pick this up in verse 16. And I want to know what you think of this. I might stagger the uploads just to fuck with you. I don't know. Why do it all at once, you know? Make anticipation. Because this is, he's in jail. In uh, Liberty right next to where the new Zion's going to be or is. It's getting good. Stay tuned. Or peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. Because I think you deserve it and you know why not. I mean if you don't someone else is going to right. <laughs>